This is an article that came out on NPR, March 22nd, 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you know this epidemic is far worse than you can even imagine. The fact that they are omitting on death certificates lead to undercounting of opioid overdoses. So there are people dying of drug overdose and it's purposely being excluded from death certificates. So when those counts come up um, for 2017, these folks won't even be counted as a drug death. Okay, and we saw this, you know, I did articles on this before in the past, but you can see they are clearly still doing this and there's no way you're going to really get an accurate count because they're just playing too many games with the numbers, trying to keep you from finding out how bad it is. But we still know it's bad. In a refrigerator in the coroner's office in Marion County, Indiana, rows of vials awaiting testing. They contain blood, urine, and vitreous, um, the fluid collected from inside a human eye. In overdose case, the fluids may contain clues for investigators. We send that off to a toxicology lab to be tested for what we call drugs of abuse. Um, the results often include drugs such as cocaine, heroin, fentanyl, or prescription pharmaceuticals. After testing, coroners typically write the drugs involved in the overdose on the death certificate, but not always. Standards for how to investigate and report on overdoses vary widely across states and counties. Why? Why? Why is there a variation when we know this is, you know, it's something that's going on in a big way all throughout the country? I think it's deliberate myself. As a result, opioid overdose deaths aren't always captured in the data reported to the federal government. The country is undercounting opioid related overdoses by 20 to 35%. That's pretty significant. That's pretty significant. In my opinion, whatever number they give you in opioid deaths, I say double or triple that number. That's probably the real number. But what they're giving you is the watered down uh, version of the number. According to a study published in February in the journal Addiction, we have a real crisis. And one of the things we need to invest in if we're going to make progress is getting better information, said Christopher Rum, the author of the paper and a health economist at the University of Virginia. Data from death certificates moved from coroners and medical examiners to states and eventually the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, which publishes reports on overdose counts across the U.S. According to the CDC, more than 42,000 people died from opioid-related overdoses in 2016. That's only from 22 states, ladies and gentlemen. They're not counting from all 50 states. That's the deceiving thing that they don't want to tell you. A 30% increase from the year before. But that number is only as good as the data states submitted to the CDC, Rump said. The real number of opioid overdose deaths is closer to 50,000. He came to the higher estimate through the analysis of overdose that weren't linked to specific drugs. On a death certificate, coroner and medical examiners often leave out exactly which drug or drugs contributed to a death. In some cases, they were classifying it as a drug death, but they don't list the kind of drugs that was involved said rum 
in the years he reviewed in his paper, 1999 to 2015, investigators didn't specify a drug in one six to one quarter of overdose deaths. Some states do worse than others. In 14 states, between 20 and 48% of all overdose deaths weren't attributed to specific drugs in 2016, according to a breakdown from 538. Many overdoses not linked to a specific drug were likely opioid related, Rum said. So the lack of specificity <laughs> leads to undercounting. Well, you know, that's pretty messed up. That's pretty messed up. You would think states would want a real count. That way they can see how bad the drugs are, you know, progressing in their state by them not counting the real numbers then you don't know whether it's worse or not. They're, they're concealing the numbers. You know, that's pretty messed up. But, you know, this is what they get away with doing in this country. Um, according to Rum's earlier research published in 2017, Indiana's opioid overdose fatality rate is especially far off he estimated the state's rate in 2014 was 14.3 overdose deaths per 100,000 people, twice as high as the rate reported that year. In some states, such as Indiana, independent county coroners investigate deaths. Coroners are usually elected and they aren't necessarily medical professionals. Other states, though, have medical examiners who are doctors. Some even have a chief medical examiner who oversees death investigations for the whole state. States that have centralized oversight with medical examiners tend to do better than those with coroners, said Rum. In some places, death investigators don't list substances on a death certificate because they haven't tested for them. Brad Ray, a policy researcher at Indiana University School of Public and Environmental Affairs, said toxicology reports cost hundreds of dollars each year, which could strain county budgets. Additionally, toxicology reports are currently optional for Indiana coroners. So if you're not required to pay for it and you're not required to report it, why would you, said Ray. Indiana legislature uh, recently passed a bill to standardize how coroners handle suspected overdoses. And Governor Eric Holcomb is expected to sign it. Starting in July, coroners will have to run toxicology screens and report the results to the state's health department. The state will also help cover the added costs. It's amazing. They got so much money in their budget for these junkies, don't they? In life and death. More accurate data will likely make the opioid problem look worse as the numbers go up. But Ray said, realistic data would help the state access federal funds to tackle the opioid plague and keep better track of drug problems. So we can see when trends are happening. We can see when there trends to be increased in cocaine and meth and decrease in opioids, if that happens, said Ray. Marion County Barlow learned at a conference last year that she could help improve the state's data. Her office was already getting toxicology reports for all suspected overdoses. And now her team will list the drugs involved in the overdose on the death certificate. 
we'll say drug overdose and drug intoxication, intoxication, and that we identify the drug, she said. So if it's five drugs that have caused or contributed to the death, then we put those five drugs down. And I agree, that's the way it should be. Why would you not list the reason for the death on the certificate or not list the drugs? Barlow plans to travel the state and train other coroners to do it the same way. Okay, so there you go. So whatever numbers we're getting, we're not getting any true numbers. Just know that we are getting lowball numbers as far as the opioid deaths are concerned. And, and personally, I think they're ashamed and they don't want the real numbers out here. And that's why the CDC don't even get all 50 states reporting their numbers. You know, each state has different requirements, which I don't think that should be the case during an epidemic. It should all be pretty much uniformed, but hey, it's not. But tell me what you think about them omitting opioid overdoses from death certificates of people that really died from the drug. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell twice and join me on Black Junction TV and BlackSpot.com. Peace, family.